Fundamental research just continues as it always does. It, it tends not to be too affected by bear markets in terms of a fundamental perspective. But in terms of uh, you know how do we react to such a situation, I think uh, one of the things we have done is in, in bear markets, we tend to contract uh, the number of assets we invest in uh, versus expanding uh, the number of assets we're investing in during bull markets. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the things we've done to kind of hyper-focus more our portfolio during, during mm -hmm. such a time. You know, the, the fund does there's a lot of principled investments. So what Fund A does in many ways is we provide exposure. Mm -hmm. So if people want exposure to this asset class, um, then we provide that. And I think it's for individual investors to decide when they want to be invested in cryptocurrency in terms of their own personal portfolios, how they want to allocate, you know, this balance. So in that sense, um, we don't necessarily hedge against downside risk, uh, which is something we are doing at the moment in terms of setting up new funds that, that do use these strategies. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're setting up a fund B, which is going to be more of a market neutral type strategy where uh, there's going to be a focus on abs, things like arbitrage and market making. Mm -hmm. Following that, we'll set up um, Fund C, which will be a uh, index fund. Mm -hmm. So that's for people that want to be more objectively invested in the market, you could say, versus you know the kind of more fundamental subjective choices that we make for yeah. Fund A. Um, so it's like a top 10 coins yeah. or... Yeah, exactly. And then uh, later down the line, we're looking at setting up Fund D, which will actually take a combination of the different funds, including Fund A, B, and C, and then also then hedging risk with you know fiat or gold or DAI or whatever we might use for that. So in that sense, uh, that that's the strategy. But in terms of Fund A and providing that exposure to people, I think that's a very good product. It's it's the product that I I'm, I'm invested in myself as well. And also because we have weekly entries and exits for our fund as well, it's really up to individual investors to uh, choose whether they want to be invested in this space in this fundamental way or not. And that that decision is with investors in in many ways. But I would say something we we tend to invest more in the larger protocol layers. So for us, instant protocol layers are things like um, uh, Ethereum, uh, BCH, now obviously BSV, we have those coins as well due to the split, uh, but also like uh, interesting projects like uh, Decreed, uh, Monero, um, Pivx, uh, the, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned Dash as well. Mm -hmm. These are these are all... Uh, yeah, Tezos as well. Tezos, uh, so it's still in a very early research phase. Similar uh, bracket than Cardano there. They're, they're, they're very much research projects still. But um, in in that view, those those to me are like some of the really interesting protocol layers. In terms of network and application layers, there's been a few a few projects that have really st stood out to us. There's the obvious ones, things like uh, MakerDAO, obviously, is I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. But project. we've also been investing in some smaller uh, uh, market cap coins as well. And one of these projects that we've actually really stood out to us is actually a project called uh, Covesting. And Covesting is actually building an exchange, a copy trading platform, uh, a, a liquidity aggregator, and, and, and has a bunch of different features. And in terms of the token economic system, it's actually one of the best we've seen so far in terms of Covesting actually uh, burns 50% uh, of the exchange fees, which from our view is a very good value proposition, token economic system as well. So that's maybe an example of a smaller market cap coin we're currently uh, focusing on quite a bit. Oh, wow. So actually they burn the, their fees. I mean, normally these fees are around uh, 0 0.25 uh, uh, yeah. Binance or... Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's about that. So it's a, it's a similar model to Binance in the sense that you put your coins on the exchange, the coins are then used to burn fees. If you're not actually using the coin itself, you don't get the discount, but it's still converted to co-vesting in order to burn the fees. So in that sense, it's all very solid and, and worked out in that way. And, you know, in terms of, you know, what is fundamental research, you know, what is a long-term, you know, fundamental view on things. So, you know, and I think I've mentioned this before, but it's it, it depends on in where in the technological stack a project lies, we actually evaluate these things differently. So for a protocol layer, so these larger protocol layers of Ethereum, we're very much looking at the consensus algorithm, we're looking at the scalability of the system, we're looking at the governance, the politics, and so forth. But when we're talking about network and application layers, we get far more into a maybe, you could call it a more kind of traditional way of looking at it in terms of, you know, what's the value proposition? What's the use case? You know, can we see people actually using this? And 
value proposition ties into token economics, of course. So for us, that's that's a very different metric and way of looking at things. But you know, in order for this space to be a success, we need both the base layers and we need the applications for people yeah. to use. So you know, it makes sense to you know invest in both sides of the coin, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Blockchain is a way to have uh, trust without a centralized authority. Yeah. So in that sense, uh, any application that really has these middlemen can be uh, disrupted and that's why we see blockchain as being so incredibly far-reaching in terms of uh, you know changing trust models and removing middlemen and you know something i really believe in is the utility of the system so you know when businesses can save money using this i think that that will drive a lot of adoption i think that's actually what's very important especially here in the first world i don't see us you know convincing the masses to adopt this as a currency first mm-hmm. i find uh, you know adoption happening through applications to be a far more likely scenario and that's and that's real you know that's good economics because that's really a profit motive you know and that's something you know incentives i think is something you really need to believe in if you believe in uh, cryptocurrency so how will it mold actually our future lives lives of our children and grandchildren that's that's a great question and it actually strikes at the heart of um why I really believe in this technology, you know, it's because of the way that it can actually fundamentally change, you know, how we do governance, you know, how we interact with people, how we come to decisions, this type of collective decision making. So in my view, what's really so fundamentally amazing about this technology is that it's really an evolution of political thought in a way. If you look at political philosophy over the last few centuries, it's been a case of uh, separation of powers, you know, uh, not having any uh, central points of control or failure. So in many ways, ways kind of decentralization is a natural extension of that so it's a very positive development in terms of governance you know i will say at the same time though even though i'm convinced that it the adoption of this technology does more good than harm it certainly also does come with a bit of harm as well as is the case with most things so in that sense you know it comes with the downside of moving into a more hyper capitalistic um mm. uh, kind of society uh and uh you know in my view and i'll maybe this is more of a controversial one but in my view i think with this technology we're avoiding a dystopia but at the same time we're also creating a new type of dystopia as well F- personally it's something i tend to bite the bullet on because I'll quote Winston Churchill here, he said, democracy is the best of the worst systems. So I think cryptocurrency is really the best type of governance systems we have today. Even though these systems are definitely not ready for that yet, Mm. uh, this is something that I'm steadily working towards and and promoting and something I also really believe in. And and I think that's where the future is. It's it's technology, it's progress. This technology is not going away. Mm. It's here to stay. All right. Thank you very much, Justin, for your wise words and all the best. Yes.